Despicable Me 4 is in theaters now. Can't believe it's only been four movies. Feels like 50. And Gru, Lucy, the kids, and the minions are all back. And the family gets even larger with the introduction of Gru Jr. <laughs> I can't wait to see what hijinks he gets up to. If you're fresh off of seeing Inside Out 2, maybe taking the family out for a nice $100 movie experience, you might be thinking, I like those Despicable Me movies. Maybe we head back for one more ride this summer. Baby, pump the brakes. I'm gonna tell you what to expect in a spoiler-free review. Let's begin. Let's not fool ourselves. The Despicable Me movies, along with most Illumination films, are fast food at the end of the day. There's nothing groundbreaking or profound going on here. The stories are very paper thin, the plots are simplistic, and the characters are very one-dimensional. And that's all right. I myself am a fan of the Despicable Me movies. The minions are, are serviceable one-time watches. They know their target demographic, which is children and dumb people. I'm, I'm in the dumb people category. And I think these are fine movies. Now, I also think Despicable Me peaked at two. That's a personal favor for me. Third, a big step down. And here we are with the fourth installment. And yet again, it feels like I'm getting dumber by the second as I watch it. <laughs> the Illumination team at this point isn't even trying to hide the fact that they're making nothing more than a product that's serving kids' attention spans. And adults, really, because we live in a world where phones are at our fingertips and we can't be bothered to follow a slower moving plot. Or at least that's what they would have me think after watching this film. There is not a minute of time that's dedicated to a slower moment. This thing is going and going and going nonstop. There are like 15 plots all ranging from relevant to completely unnecessary like a family guy cutaway joke. There are laughs for sure, there are big misses for sure, and I think really what it gets down to for me is the overall plot is not great. Do I think this is a bad movie? I mean, kind of. Is it a watchable movie? Absolutely. Is it going to work for the audience that has liked the previous three? Yeah, I think for the most part it will. But the big issue I have with it is the villain. Maxime is the new baddie in this one, voiced by Will Ferrell. He's joined by his accomplice, Valentina, played by Sofia Vergara. I guess played by Sofia Vergara. She's just herself. This woman refuses to improve her English. She's almost regressing here. Half the stuff Valentina says feels like it was the first take and that's all they could use. So they went with it, even if it was kind of stumbled across the finish line. Maxime apparently attended the same evil school that Gru did back in the day and he was made to look foolish for reasons that will be explained later in the dumbest way possible. While they meet up, right away at the beginning of this movie at an awards ceremony where Maxime vows to ruin Gru's life, go after his family, and put an end to their rivalry once and for all. That is but a mere morsel of the plots going on in this film. Gru freaks out, the family is relocated, they're given new names, new identities, Gru doesn't really change his look at all, he just puts on a pink polo and apparently that's enough to trick anyone? What? What? Again, this movie doesn't care about making any sense. No, it doesn't, nothing matters. Nothing matters at all. Kids will like it because it's moving quick. There's so many colors. I found myself starting to nod off around an hour in because the movie's so loud. There's so many effects going on. So obnoxiously colorful and sugar-coated that I just couldn't help but get lulled into a trance. And I, I, I think at one point, 10 minutes went by and I was definitely awake, but things were just moving around. It was like a blur. Like a concussion grenade just went off. And I'm kind of like feeling around the room. Wild stuff. Lucy takes up a job as a hairdresser. Shenanigans take place. A lady gets pissed at her, and then that's a side plot of this woman, like, T-1000 running her down. Gru befriends a neighbor that wants to play tennis at one point. Oh, the neighbor also has a daughter that wants to be evil and needs Gru's help to break in and steal an animal. The minions are now working for the secret government agency. A few of them have been handpicked to become superheroes. Why? I don't fucking know. To sell toys, I guess. 
And let's not forget we got Gru Jr. in here up to misadventures, constantly picking at his dad. They have kind of a bad relationship that hopefully will get resolved by the end of this movie. But yeah, the overarching plot is about Maxime hoping to get revenge and he goes all in on cockroaches. I don't... I don't know whose idea it was over at Illumination, who thought that this was the greatest thing to put on paper, but yeah, the movie goes all in on cockroaches, and they're weird and really obnoxious looking. They have these giant eyes, they're wearing helmets, ready to go to war, and Maxime has altered his body to be one. Horrific. I never really minded the look of the Despicable Me movies over the years. I thought they were fine, they did the job. This fourth one, for some reason, just... It was off for me. The character designs, the models, even, even the kids. Gru's kids looked a little weird in this one. Something was just different, and I can't put my finger on it. But I don't particularly enjoy looking at this movie. As for the music, it's Illumination. You're going to get pop references constantly. Throwback music, it's there, it's fine, whatever. Anytime the movie cuts to the minions, I'm more invested. I thought their stuff was really fun, for the most part, outside the superhero crap. Whenever you put these characters, who are essentially a tinderbox, ready to blow at any moment, into a situation that's pretty stable, hilarity is going to ensue. So having them go work with the agency was a fun idea. One that they could have pushed even further, I thought. Overall, you have a watchable, hot mess of a film that kids will probably enjoy because, again, colorful. It's basically a sticker pack of stuff going on. Every page turn has a new thing to peel off and, and look at for a second before something else takes place. If you didn't like the last one and you said, I've had enough of this, they double down on the dumb. They double down on the ADD style of storytelling. You're going to hate this thing. I thought the last one was very mediocre, watchable. This one, even worse than that. Still watchable, mainly because I like all these characters. And I will say, the final couple moments of this one, that kind of brought it home. It brought things back around again. And that it was a nice ending. I'll say that much. It felt like an ending that could end this franchise, and that would be fine. They won't because these movies make a lot of money, so we'll get Despicable Me 50 before you actually know it. For now though, because movies are so expensive, I recommend waiting until this comes out on Peacock or Hulu or wherever the hell it's gonna end up at the end of the day, whoever has the rights that given month for this thing, and just maybe save some money, because it's expensive, man. It's very expensive, and the Minions, as much as I like them, you can wait to watch their shenanigans at home. Well, there's my thoughts on Despicable Me 4. Tread lightly, I'll say that much. Let me know if you saw it or if you plan to in the comments below. Please like the video and subscribe. I post movie reviews, commentary, live streams every week. Would love to have you stick around. All right, take care.